Hey math students, how you doing? Uh, today we're going to do some more partial fractions and uh, well we're just going to jump right into it and here's one right behind my head here. We have 7x squared plus 9x uh, plus 3 over, that should be a cubed, x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. And I need to decompose that into partial fractions. So if we remember what we learned last time, the first step was First off, make sure that the degree of the numerator is not greater than the degree of the denominator. It's not, so that's cool. And, uh, and then we just factor the denominator and we set up the, fra the fractions as uh, 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 according to how this is factored. So let's see. First thing I can do is I can take an x out from here and I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. I know what that is. That's uh, x plus 1 squared, right? So this is going to be something over x plus something over x plus 1 plus something over the other term, x plus 1, right? Except this doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is you can look at that and go, well, shoot, those two already have common denominators. Uh, I can just put those together and it'll be b plus c over uh, x plus 1. And we can just combine that b plus c to be one variable. Um, but that's not going to get us a fraction with this denominator. It's going to get us a, a fraction that is x times x plus 1. So what you got to do is you got to say a over x plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1 squared. Okay, now it's going to work. We can still do this uh, decomposition into partial fractions, but when you have one of your uh, um, uh, factors that is a perfect square, or for that matter, a perfect cube or a perfect fourth, you have to set it up like this. So if it were a perfect cube, I would need plus d over x plus 1 cubed, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So now we have it like this. Uh, well, now we can get to work. Okay. So that means this is going to be a times x plus 1 squared over x times x plus 1 squared plus b times x times x plus 1 over x times x plus 1 squared, making sure that I multiply everything by the appropriate factors, plus, and this is c over x plus 1 squared, so it's just going to be cx over x times x plus 1 squared. And now I have common denominators, so now I can just add on through. So this is going to be a, and I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that. So ax squared plus 2ax plus a plus bx squared plus bx plus cx over x times x plus 1 squared. Okay, we good so far? Uh, all I did here is I just uh, uh, multiplied out, distributed. Okay, now it's time to combine our like terms. So let's get our x squareds together. This is going to be a plus b uh, x squared. Now our x's plus 2a plus b plus c x. And now our constant terms, which is just that one, plus a over x times x plus 1 squared. Now I compare this to this. And I say, okay, well, I can see now that a has to be 3. So a is going to equal 3. a plus b has to equal 7. And I've already figured out that a is 3. So that means b is going to be 4 to make a plus b equal 7. And then 2a plus b plus c has to equal 9. Okay, let's think for a second. Uh, 2a is going to be 6, plus b is going to be 4, so 6 plus 4 is 10, plus c is 9. That tells me that c is negative 1. So what's my answer going to be? My answer is going to be 3 over x plus 4 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 squared. And that is my answer. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so now we have 5x squared plus 15x plus 7 over x cubed plus 7x squared, okay? 
Uh, what can we factor out of this? Well, we can factor out an x squared. x squared times x plus 7. So we're going to have the same issue happening that we had last time, and that is we're going to have something over x plus something over x squared plus something over x plus 7. Okay? So these two fractions both correspond to the x squared. All right. Uh, and we'll call this A, we'll call this B, and we'll call this C. And this is going to be uh, A times X times X plus 7. Remember, uh, i got to look at that and compare it to that. Over X squared times X plus 7. Plus B times X plus 7 over X squared X plus 7. Plus... Uh, c x squared over x squared times x plus 7. I think you can still see, oops, I'm not sure you can see that. Uh, it says c x squared over x squared times x plus 7. Let me move things over to the left a little bit. So this is going to get us a x squared plus 7 a x plus b x plus 7 b plus c x squared, everything over x squared, oops, x squared times x plus 7. Combine our like terms into, uh, so let's see, the x squareds are going to be a plus c times x squared. The x's are going to be uh, 7a plus b times x. And the constants are just 7b. And that is over x cubed plus 7x squared. Again, now we take this and we compare it to our original problem. So that means uh, 7b is 7. So b equals 1. All right? Um, 7a plus b equals 15. Okay? And so since we figured out that b is 1, so 7a plus 1 is 15, so 7a is 14, so that means a is 2. And a plus c has to equal 5, and if a is 2, then c must be 3. Okay. So what does that tell us? It tells us that this equals 2 over x plus 1 over x squared plus 3 over x plus 7. That worked out pretty well. Let's do another one. Okay, so this time 6x squared minus 5x plus 12 over x cubed plus 3x. Remember first step after we established that the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator, the first step is always uh, factor that denominator. So I'm gonna get Let's see, I can pull an x out of there, and I'm left with, hmm, okay. This one's a little different, because this time one of my factors is a quadratic, and I can't reduce that anymore. Okay, that's a, that's a quadratic term, uh, or sorry, a quadratic factor that cannot be factored any further. So this is what happens. We can still do this, but it's not going to be quite as tidy. So I'm going to say something over x plus something over x squared plus 3. But I can't just put a b here. What I have to do is I have to put bx plus c. Okay? Whatever I put here, the degree of that has to be one less than the degree of what I have right here. All right? So, uh, okay. Well, now, now we go forward. So this is going to be a times x squared plus 3 over x times x squared plus 3 plus b uh, x plus c times x over x squared plus 3 times x. And that equals ax squared plus uh, 3a, that's a 3 there, kind of a bad looking 3, uh, plus bx squared plus cx over x cubed plus 3x. And this is actually going to be 
pretty easy here. Um, let me put my uh, x squareds together. A plus B x squared uh, plus C x plus 3A. Uh, this is going to be a piece of cake. 12 is 3A. That means A equals 4. Negative 5 is C. C equals negative 5. And A plus B equals 6. And we already said that A is 4. So that means B has got to be 2. And there you go. A is 4. I'm going to erase this and put a 4. B is 2 and C is 5. So this is going to be 2x minus 5 over x squared plus 3. Okay? It doesn't simplify it as much as the ones that we had done before, but it's still pretty good. Okay? So uh, let's summarize what we do here. Let's summarize our strategies. So let's take a look at the slide that I just put up. Uh, it says, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, this is step one, uh, then first we divide and we apply the decomposition, decomposition of partial fractions just to the remainder. Okay, that was from the last uh, video that we did. Then we factor the denominator. If all of our factors are linear, it's easy. Okay, it's just going to be x over one factor. Or sorry, it's going to be a over one factor plus b over another factor plus c over another factor, etc. That's easy. If uh, if the factor is quadratic, like this last example we just had, if the factor is quadratic and it can't be factored anymore, then what you have to have is a linear factor, so ax plus b or bx plus c or something like that, over that quadratic factor. And if you're thinking, well, what if it's cubic? Yeah, well, the same thing still applies. You're going to have to have a quadratic factor, so ax, AX plus bx squared, sorry, ax squared plus bx plus c over that cubic factor. Um, I'm generally not going to give you problems like that. And, uh, and then finally, uh, if we have a factor that is a power of one of your, one of the prior, uh, forms that I just said, then, uh, one of your fractions is going to be that factor. The, the denominator will be that factor. Another fraction will be that factor squared. And depending on what the power is, you keep on adding more and more. Okay. And uh, so that's, that's how you set up your fractions. And then after that, you uh, put things in terms of you get all your x squareds together, you get all your x's together, you get all your constants together, and then you compare with the coefficients of the problem that you were originally given. You solve for what a is, you solve for what b is, you solve for what c is, and then what you get is a system of equations, and you solve that system of equations, and then substitute the a, b, and, b and c, and d, etc. back in there, and you got your partial fractions. All right? Hope this helps. Bye-bye.